Hey, bio team. Uh, so you guys have learned that even though uh, every cell in our body has a complete copy of our genome, uh, that they don't need to express all of their DNA all of the time. That is, they can do gene regulation. They can control when and how much genes get expressed. Now, it turns out uh, gene regulation looks a little bit different between uh, prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, and eukaryotic cells, like ours. And so you've already learned about prokaryotic regulation. Uh, prokaryotes use systems called operons uh, to control gene regulation, which are just groups of related genes uh, whose transcription is regulated by an operator. So we've gone over two types of examples in class. We've gone over examples of inducible operons. Uh, for example, the LAC operon, uh, the operon that controls uh, the production of lactose digestion enzymes. And what makes the LAC operon an inducible operon is the fact that there is normally a repressor uh, blocking transcription of uh, the lactose enzyme genes. However, uh, this operon can be induced uh, to start transcription uh, by the presence of an inducer like uh, lactose. The lactose uh, binds to the repressor and removes it from the operator. Uh, you've also seen the opposite of an inducible operon. You've seen uh, repressible operons. Uh, for example, the TRIP operon is a repressible operon. And those work in the other direction. In a repressible operon, uh, the repressor protein involved normally allows transcription to occur. Uh, but it can be repressed uh, by the addition of a co-repressor, which can bind to a repressor and cause it to uh, latch onto the operator and block transcription. Eukaryotic regulation works uh, through similar tools where it has the ability to repress and activate genes. Uh, but the difference with eukaryotic cells is that oftentimes the genes uh, coding for proteins in a similar task are not right next to each other on the same chromosome. They're spread across uh, multiple different chromosomes. So for instance, let's say these five genes right here are all genes used uh, for the detoxification of alcohol from the bloodstream. Well, in order to access and activate all five of these genes at the same time, what eukaryotic cells will do is use something called a multipurpose transcription factor, uh, which is just a type of protein that can turn on multiple related genes or turn off multiple related genes. Uh, by working as either a repressor or an activator. And so we can see here that this transcription factor is itself a protein uh, that gets transcribed and translated from a gene. And what the transcription factor can do, let's say if there's a large amount of alcohol in the bloodstream, is this transcription factor uh, can bind to DNA on all five of these genes, either working to enhance or, in the case of gene D, uh, to silence transcription. And then, of course, on the genes uh, in which the transcription factor is promoting transcription, you can see that these genes go on to uh, express as proteins, uh, which can work together to accomplish uh, whatever task they had initially set out to, in this case, detoxifying the blood. Uh, that's it. At this point, you guys have some practice problems. Uh, we'll see you next class.